Hi, David. Hello. Thank you so much. This is the second uh, time we have the opportunity at Animation Express to interview you. We spoke to you at Fiki Frames 2006, right. I guess. Ago, yeah. uh, sir, so what's your take on NSE 2010? Well, we've just had the famous DreamWorks Jelly Plate organized Technicolor picnic right. um, under the trees, out of the sun, although it's overcast today. As ever, it's a great event. The most important thing is meeting the people. It's always good to see the films. There's always some inspiring stuff in the, in the uh, on the screen, but the most important thing is the opportunity to meet, meet your old colleagues, meet some of the new talent, meet people like you, and talk about the industry. What trends in the industry are the most impressive, according to you, in the last one year? Well, I suppose there's been a bit of a shift, I think. Um, 3D features is a big thing. You mean stereo? Stereo, yeah, 3D stereo in the feature film part of it. Um, I think over the last four or five years you've seen uh, a much bigger audience for uh, CGI animated feature films in the cinema, certainly in, in Europe and in America, and that's building into quite a big business actually in all sorts of ways. I think the studios are finding they've got too expensive. Uh, the DVD market you know, is it's collapsing, so they're finding smarter and smarter ways of doing them. And unfortunately, the technology has got better and cheaper, which is good. So it's, e it's kind of easier. The hardest bit's always the writing and getting the stories right. Making the thing isn't that difficult these days. You just need a lot of people. Um, so that's been quite a trend, I think. And I think because of the fact that more, particularly CGI films are coming out, people just want really good stories. The, the wow factor has gone, you know, they've seen big effects movies, they've seen Toy Story 1, 2, 3, they've seen the Shreks, they just want really good stories. Uh, the technology is no longer, you know, the thing that's getting into the cinema. Um, and that's a, uh, that's always going to pertain, it's always going to be like that. Um, although having said that, um, Alice in Wonderland, I think, had a, it's done phenomenal box office. Uh, and probably isn't that story driven as a film. Okay. But you always have these exceptions. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's, you know, you have these exceptions. What else is happening? Um, I think children's Creative environment in the UK, what is your, what well, is your we're perspective doing, on it? Man, we're doing a lot of children's work. Uh, Shaun the Sheep. Shaun the Sheep, Timmy Time Preschool work. As ever, it's a jigsaw of funding. Um, but again, good character driven work, something that's different, it's not too cynical. Honest characters in, in fun stories. Uh, we're lucky that we've got, we've got those two properties with us. Um, and I think I think that sort of area has been kind of reinvented. I think maybe that again people say actually you can do quality work, quality stories for a reasonable price, and there's a market for it. I think in other areas, and probably Asia, the children's television market is really beginning to open up. Um, you know, Europe it's been there for some time. I think in Asia. It's a younger market, but that's really beginning to open up. Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, are opening up there. Disney are going into Asia more. Uh, you've got the whole Chinese market opening up, which is absolutely immense, as well as the Indian market. So they're great opportunities. And I think particularly for indigenous filmmakers in those countries to tell, to tell sort of modern versions or contemporary versions of their traditional stories in their own culture for their own people, I think, in those territories is a fantastic opportunity, actually. You know, we've often said, that it's difficult for us to say make in England to make a Hollywood type of feature. We'll make features based on our own English culture, our own English stories. That's what we do best. They should play in America, they do to an extent. They play much better in the UK, obviously. And they play pretty well in Europe. Um, will they play in Shanghai? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I think, you know, dealing with your own culture and your own cultural traditions is, is certainly where to start. And if you've got a big potential audience there, uh, that's where you'll get most of your money back. Most Indian studios are aspiring to make what is termed as universally accepted content or globally yeah. accepted content, which means not necessarily Indian cultural yeah. content. Yeah. What is your point of view on that? I think it's a very interesting and possibly misleading term. Okay. Personally, um, here we are at Annecy, yeah. a beautiful town in France, so different to the towns in England, which is why we love it. It's different. The food's different. The scenery, the scenery's different. The scenery is different. <laughs> um, yeah. The girls are different. 
the atmosphere is different. And we celebrate that difference. Right. And we wouldn't want it all turned into a McDonald's or a burger bar or to be like an English town. So why would you want to try and homogenise stories in the same sort of way? As I said, it would be hard for us to say, to tell a story with a French-based culture. I'm an Englishman. I can talk about cricket and English football and English culture. And those are the stories that we'll tell best. You can, what you do find is that in every culture there are families. And the best stories revolve very broadly around those family relationships. And, you know, those relationships are different. I don't know whether they're agreeing or disagreeing with what I'm saying. But those family relationships are, are universal. Right. They will differ uh, within those cultures. But the fundamental relationships and the fundamental emotional relationships, as I say. Uh, and I would say that if you're in India or Asia or China, the thing that will find an audience universal for you is a film about family, but set it in your own culture, because that's what you understand. Right. I think otherwise it'll look false. You'll try and make a sort of, it'll be a slightly American pseudo. pseudo, and it'll be heartless, because it won't have the passion or the detail or the nuance that an indigenous story has. And people love to see different sorts of stories. You know, fundamentally, the story is all about falling in and out of love, or good versus bad. You know, there are only so many story plots in the whole world, and what you want to see are the changes that are run around those plots. And that's why we enjoy foreign films, foreign tales, and foreign countries. So don't be afraid of doing something that's set within your own culture, which you can tell really, really well, but it has a universal theme. Thank you so much. Great.